Romans chapter twelve, verse three. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Numbers chapter twelve, verse seven. Not so with my servant Moses; he is faithful in all my household. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, members of over 4,500 branch churches in Korea and all over the world, including the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Honduras, Peru, Bolivia, El Salvador, Argentina, Germany, France, Russia, Belgium. The Netherlands, China, Japan, Pakistan, Nepal, Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, India, Mongolia, Egypt, Israel, Kenya, Uganda, Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, Nigeria, Swaziland, South Africa, Botswana, Cote d'Ivoire, and local sanctuary members, those who are attending the service on the internet all over the world, and television viewing audiences. This is the 24th session. On the measure of faith, the fifth session on the fifth level of faith. Until the last session, I explained two distinguishing characteristics of the fifth level of faith. First, at fifth level of faith, you can obey God's will completely, and you can give even your life. The second is that you will accumulate a limitless amount of prayer and perform signs and wonders. The third trait of the fifth level of faith is that you will be faithful in all God's household. Before I explain about being faithful in all God's house, let us first learn about what faithfulness is. Faithfulness in God's eyes is to do more than what is entrusted to you. For example, when you hire somebody and pay the wage for him to do a certain work. And if that worker just does what he's supposed to do, we do not say he is faithful. Of course, although they are paid, there are people who don't even do their job properly, so we can say this person only did well. But he just did as much as what he is paid for, so he cannot be commended for being faithful. But although he is paid, if he does the work with all his time, money, and energy, thinking from his heart, he would work more than what he is supposed to do. We can say he is faithful. Even in history, when the officials just did their job and duty, we cannot say they were really faithful workers. One can be recognized to be faithful only when he does much more than what he is supposed to do, not caring about whether he is paid or not, or whether he is paid much or little. For example, in case of Admiral Sun Shin Lee, he didn't complain at all, even when he was jailed. Although he protected the country with all his life, he only worried about the future of the country. Even when he had to go to the battle, after all his official titles were taken away, he fought without any complaint. Until he died in a fierce battle, his faithfulness and devotion did not change. Even in this world, this kind of person can be considered to be faithful. For us to be recognized as faithful men, we have to do much more than what we are entrusted to. So that we can benefit the kingdom of God, those who have come into the fourth level of faith can be considered to be spiritually faithful. Those who have become sanctified and have entered into the fourth level of faith also bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, so they bear the fruit of faithfulness too. But for this faithfulness to become the faithfulness in all God's house. You have to go into the fifth level of faith and bear all the fruits of the Holy Spirit 
So this is different from the fourth level. For example, until faithfulness is born, you must sacrifice yourself and devote yourself for the benefit of others. But without spiritual love, you cannot sacrifice or devote yourself like this. Also, if you lack the fruit of self-control, although you may be faithful in one aspect, you may not be as faithful to the same degree in other aspects. If you don't have the proper fruit of peace, even though you work for God faithfully, you may have some troubles with other people, and in the process, you may hurt the feelings of other people. The faithfulness with peace that has been broken cannot be stored as full reward before God. You should know that Satan is surely working when the peace is broken. There are many things in which I just take up the loss for the sake of peace. It is rather better than letting Satan begin his work. So I just follow peace even though I have to take up some loss. Therefore, you should be faithful spiritually and in order to be faithful in all God's household, you should remember, you should not only have faithfulness, but you must be bearing every fruit of the Holy Spirit fully. So, if you go into the whole Spirit, you bear nine fruits of the Holy Spirit completely, and each of them is accomplished fully. Each of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit is born perfectly, so they have interconnection with each other. If one is not enough, we cannot say the fruits are born perfectly. So all nine fruits of the Holy Spirit have to be born perfectly. Only then can you say each of them is fully ripened. But what exactly is to be faithful in all God's house? It is to fully perform your duty and to do much more than your job and the payment that you receive for it. In your Christian life, you have many duties in the Lord. You have to perform your duties faithfully, and you should not only work hard for one or two things, but you have to do the job with all your heart in every aspect. This is to be faithful in all God's household. Some duties seem to be more important than others, and the work of some duties can be recognized by other people more easily than other duties. But if you are in the whole spirit, you will consider any duty of God preciously, whether it seems to be big or small in man's eyes. So you will perform all duties with all your heart and mind and strength. But it is not easy to be faithful in all God's house like this. If you have just three or four duties, you will try hard to be faithful in all things but because you have so many duties and you are busy, you cannot care for some of the duties given. For some work, it is very important and urgent, so you do it. But for some other work, it is not very urgent, so you neglect it. Then sometimes, you justify yourself thinking, Man have limits and how can I put in my heart and energy in everything? But if you are in the whole spirit, no matter how many duties you have, you can be faithful in all aspects and bear fruits. It's because you resemble the heart of the Father, who is perfect, and you have the heart of the Christ, the heart of God who is spirit, has infinite space, and he can harbor and embrace anything and everything. He harbors in his heart the entire history of mankind and the lives of countless people as if he is looking into his palm. Of course, even though you are in the fifth level of faith, you are not same as God. 
But because you resemble the characteristics of God who is spirit, you can harbor so many souls and so many things in your heart. Also, you have the love to sacrifice your life for the kingdom of God and for the souls interested to you. You can bring down God's works by harboring the souls and praying for them passionately with love. Of course, harboring all works and putting in your heart and energy in the same way does not mean you have to spend exactly the same amount of time for each work and consider everything urgent. Obviously, there are more urgent matters and less urgent matters. Also, there are things on which you have to spend relatively more time. As I am explaining about the fourth and fifth level of faith, I feel sorry for new believers or newcomers. It was okay when I was explaining about the first, second, and third levels of faith. Why it is getting more and more difficult? I feel sorry that I have to preach something uh, difficult for you. But those who are in the third level and fourth levels of faith are longing for this message very much. They want to get into the fourth level and fifth levels of faith. So those who are in the f first and second levels of faith, even if you don't understand quite well, please be patient and listen to the message. You anyway have to go into third, fourth, and fifth levels of faith. That is true blessing. Now obviously, there are more urgent matters and less urgent matters. So, also there are things on which you have to spend relatively more time. But those who have the fruit of being faithful in all God's house do not consider any duty lightly and do not treat any of the souls lightly. Whether you spend more time or less time on some work, your attitude and heart itself will be faithful and trying the best in all aspects. In my case, it's difficult to count how many titles I have. I am trying to reduce the number of titles I have in church associations, but I already have many titles. Above all, I am a shepherd of tens of thousands of members of this church and the president of the denomination that has more than 4,500 uh, 4, branch churches. I always have to harbor in my heart not only the main church, but there are so many branch churches, so many missionaries, assistant pastors, and all Levites. There are also books, translation works, broadcasting, and GCN broadcasting station, and my writings appear on many newspapers. So all these things make me very busy. Also, we have to do world mission, and the biggest thing is, I have to receive spiritual trainings. I cannot visit each home of so many members. Also, I barely have a chance to visit Korean branch churches, not to even mention all of the branch churches in other countries. But in my heart, I never ceased praying for all the souls before the Father. In the case of the Apostle Paul, as he was establishing many churches, he always harbored numerous souls in his heart and prayed to God for them. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 says, Since the day we heard of it, namely Colossian church, we have not ceased to pray for you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 2 says, We give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers. Also, the Bible mentions the Apostle Paul praying for all the believers, though he could not stay with all the members of each church. As for me as well, from the moment I open my eyes in the morning until late night, even when I'm doing something, my prayer for the duties given to me and for the souls do not ever cease. Before I go to bed, or as soon as I wake up in the morning, or when I lie down, or meditate, I always think of God's works. 
What is first? How do I have to solve this? I always think about those things, harbor them in my heart, and pray about them. Whether they are workers who stay close to me, or members of faraway branch churches, I pray for them and commit them into God's hands in the same way. There are also sick people, and those who are in need, and there are also churches with financial difficulties. I also have to pray for these things. So I can receive inspir inspiration on what to say for each person and teach you from the pulpit. And when I have short personal meetings with you, God reminds me of the things to say to you to guide you spiritually. At the time of Exodus, there were about 600,000 soldiers. So we estimate the whole population was about 2 million. Moses could not meet every single person and counsel them. But Moses harbored all of the people in spirit and cared for them with a love that could sacrifice his life for them. That's why God said Moses was faithful in all God's household. It's same with you. To the extent that you go into spirit, you can harbor more things in spirit, so then you can perform many duties. For example, in a parish or mission group, if they have a revival and their number of members increase to 200 or more, they make a request to the church to give them one more pastor, an assistant parish pastor. Then, because they want it so much, the church appoints one more pastor for them. But it is actually giving hard time to the church because we are short of pastors. There are so many other countries that are asking us to send some pastors and missionaries there. We can't answer all of them. There are so many places asking for a branch church to be set up. We are always in need of pastors, but you also ask for another pastor. The church is getting into more difficulty. But if you pastors are really capable, you should first think about the church. You shouldn't think about yourself first, but the church. Our church is always in need of pastors. And if you request for your assistant pastor for a couple of hundred people, you should know that the church is getting into more trouble. Then what do you do because you have so many members to take care of? That's why you need faithfulness in all God's house. In the beginning of the church, God said a small group leader can take care of 40 members if he is able. So small group is the smallest unit and there are bigger groups. So if you are a mission group pastor, you should be able to embrace at least a couple of hundreds of members. If you are a parish pastor, you should be able to take care of more than 500 or even 1,000 members. Now, how do you visit so many members? If you just teach your district leaders, sub-district leaders, and cell leaders properly, they will understand your heart, and they can take care of the souls the way you want. If they need your help, they will report to you. If the organization is working properly like this, you can take care of hundreds of members just by yourself. You wouldn't really need an assistant parish pastor or assistant mission group pastor. You have district, sub-district, and cell leaders for you. You should raise them and train them so they will receive more strength and they will be able to take care of more souls. The first priority 
for pastors is to pray to go into spirit and to visit and shepherd the members. Then other things follow. There are priorities in things. If your flock is falling away because you don't shepherd them well, you shouldn't think about other things. You should first take care of, the, take care of them so bears or lions will not take them spiritually. Also, if they take your flock away, you should bring them back. You have to save your flock. Because pastors are neglecting these things, there isn't much revival, although there are many newcomers. To the extent that you go into spirit, you can harbor more things in spirit, so then you can perform many duties. For example, if 500 people are interested to you, you cannot visit all of them every week. You will more often visit those who are weak in faith and have urgent problems. But for some other people, you visit them only once or twice a year. Then you may feel that you are not doing what you're supposed to do with regards to the people you cannot visit often. But if you have a truly faithful heart, you will always harbor in your heart all of the flock entrusted to you in spirit, whether you see them often or not. Even though you didn't see a particular soul for months, you still harbor him or her in your heart all the time, so God works for that person appropriately, knowing your heart. There are so many members in this church but if a regular member stops attending church, I know, I know it in most cases. I feel in my heart a certain member is not seen recently. If it is not, if it is because that member is attending worship services at a corner of the sanctuary or in the second or the third sanctuary where it is not seen easily, God let me see his or her face in that week or in next week. God somehow lets me see that member. That way, God lets me not worry about that member. But when I worry about a particular member, and if I don't see him or her for a couple more weeks, it means he or she is not attending church right now. Also, there can be other reasons. This way, I care for all the members. Then if you are a parish pastor or a mission group pastor, it wouldn't make sense if you are not aware of the state of the faith of your members, whether they are doing well or they are falling away. It wouldn't make sense if you are not aware, even though they are in tests. It means you are neglecting, praying for your flock and caring for them. Also it means district, sub-district and cell leaders are not caring for souls and not making proper reports to the pastor. Only if cell leaders work well, why wouldn't she know how her cell members are doing? It'll be reported to the sub-district leader and district leader so they can take care of the souls. If they cannot, they will go to the parish pastor, so how would parish, parish pastor not know? This way, you can take care of the whole parish not to lose even one soul. So when necessary, God moves your heart to pray with exceptional fervor for that person or makes you visit that member. Maybe he can let you meet that person as if by chance so you can tell that person what is needed or he lets you take care of the souls interested to you in some other way. Though you meet that person just for a while and just once, the amount of harboring that person in your heart will come out as good fruit. It's different from not visiting the souls because of your laziness and saying, I am praying for him instead. How earnest and concerned you'll be when you try to do your duty with all your life and pray to God saying, Father, please take care of the souls whom I cannot meet directly. God receives the aroma of that heart and takes care of the souls himself. It's not only about taking care of souls but also any God-given duty. If you say, I am taking 
care of the souls diligently, but there is no revival. Their faith doesn't grow up, and they fall away. Then you should pray and look back on yourself deeply. As I told you before, one visit of a man of spirit is better than ten visits of a man of flesh in taking care of souls. When a man of spirit visits once, that soul's faith can grow up just by one visit. But a man of flesh, even if he visits ten times, it is difficult for the soul's faith to grow up. Then what should you look back? You should realize how fleshly visits you are making when you shepherd your flock, for there is no revival in your parish. If you go into spirit and make spiritual visits, it will never be so. If you visit them spiritually, the enemy devil and Satan disturbing the household will go away. You will let the soul be captured by the fire of the Holy Spirit and the heavenly host and angels so those souls will prosper. They'll be protected not to let their hearts be taken away by the world. This is what pastors have to do. So you can see to yourself that how much you lack in prayer and you did not really long to and try to go into spirit and that you are caring about the worldly things. I'm not saying you have to spend the same amount of time and same amount of effort in all your duties. The way of being faithful in all God's house is to harbor everything in spirit with all your heart, mind, and strength to bear fruits. Some may say, if you have so many duties, you won't be able to do all of them. So wouldn't it be better to have only a couple of duties and be faithful to them so you can be faithful in all God's house? You may say so. You can do better when you have less number of titles. But in God's sight, who will he say is a more capable servant and worker? Why did God give five talents, two talents, and one talent to different persons? God gave one person only one talent because that person is less capable. He won't be able to handle two talents. God gave five talents to another man because he is able to do the job. So if you are more capable, you will have more works to do. If you lack capability, if you will have less. Since we are talking about our duties, you know we should all be faithful in our duties and in all God's house. But some people have too many titles. Some have seven, eight, nine, or even ten titles. Why did they become, why did they come to have ten duties? You shouldn't take as many as ten if you cannot handle all of them. You may say, you don't want to disobey the one who is giving you the title. Of course, if the church is giving you the title, you should receive it in order that you may not disobey the church. But you should also distinguish between cases. There are titles given by the church, and some other titles are from mission groups or other groups. They may request you to become their financial director or something. Or the leader of your parish may ask you to take a title, you should be able to discern. In case of titles given by the church, you should receive it so that you won't disobey. But such titles are given only once a year. It is given just before the annual church assembly. There may be other cases too, but generally, they are given once a year. You should take them if you are given. It is given in God's name, but other than these titles, there are other duties too. In these cases, you should discern very well. You already have many titles, and if you just take another one, only because it seems good, and if you don't do the job, you cannot be faithful in all God's house. You can take as much as you can handle. You shouldn't just take all the titles offered to you. You have to think before you say yes, whether you can really do the job or not. 
then it is not disobedience even though you do not take it. You are refusing it because you want to do your job properly. When the church is appointing somebody, we have the personnel management committee and they evaluate each worker and give the title. Then when our committee evaluates workers, they should be aware how many titles each worker already has. They want to give a certain title to somebody. Then they should consider how many titles this person already has and whether he, he or she can handle the job if another title is given and whether he or she will have a hard time because of it. You should consider these things. You shouldn't just say, oh, he has good faith, so he'll do it. But then the committee may have a hard time because they cannot find anybody to appoint. There are many who don't have any duties, but the committee is concerned that those people are not able to do the job if a particular title is given to them. So they finally give the title to a trustworthy person, and this person is given more and more duties. But even when the church appoints somebody, the committee has to consider the situations of the workers so that they can do their jobs because it is difficult to refuse a title given by the church. You should ask before you give the title to that person. If you need a financial director, you have to ask that person first. You can ask, you have this duty and now if you are given another duty, can you handle it too? Will you have time? Then that person can decide on his own. He, if he feels it will be too difficult, he may say he cannot do it because of many other duties and so on. It is not disobedience or anything. He just answered the question, so it's not, a, it's not disobedience. You should be wise between yourselves. Even the church has to ask the person whether he or she can do the job and actually give the title only when that person agrees. But if your heart itself is faithful, you will always want to do more work for the kingdom of God and long for more duties. You will also be passionate about dying souls, so you will want more duties. If you say you will do only a couple of things that you can do well, you are already far away from being faithful in all God's house. You should remember one thing here. If you are faithful in all God's house, you will be faithful in your personal areas, bear fruits there, and give glory to God. Let's say you are faithful in church but do not care for your family members or you are known as an unfaithful person in your school or workplace. And when others look at you, can they say you are really a faithful worker? In my case, since the opening of this church, I hardly have time to care for my family members. Knowing my children wanted to be with their father so much, I wasn't even able to take the time to sit together at the dinner table very often. Maybe just twice at Chuseok Korean Thanksgiving Day and Luda New Year's Day. But last year, I think we didn't get together even at Chuseok holidays. Also, when we have a vacation, we stay together. Other than this, we don't even have time to go out to eat. But although I was very busy, I did not forget about or neglected my family members. That is also a God-given duty for me as the head of a family. Also, my family members are my flock, interested to me. So, I have always harbored them in my heart. Yes, even the duty as the head of the family is given by God, and also my family members are the flock interested to me too. So I always harbor them in my heart. God received my heart and raised my children himself. God always fulfilled the spiritual and material necessities of my family members. Also, God lets me know in advance. Sometimes he tells me something necessary many years prior. When I met them once in a while or for a few short moments, 
God gave them grace to feel my love as a parent for them, as my children, and also my love as a shepherd to them as part of my flock. If I have not cared for them in my heart, saying that I was busy with God's work, and if I had not entrusted them to God and just neglected them, I would have been sorry even before God. It's not only about family members, it's all the same in schools, workplace, in anything and everywhere. Those who are faithful already have faithful heart itself. So they are faithful not only in God's kingdom but also in any area. But I'm not saying you must be always the number one in your class or you must get the best results in your workplace. I am saying you should at least be recognized as a faithful person by other people. Of course, when you have to prioritize things, God-given duties are more important and to save souls should come first. But if you just do God's work faithfully but are not faithful in other works, it is more likely that you are not faithful in God's house with your heart but you are being faithful in flesh or you are working hard for God with momentary zeal. Brothers and sisters, especially our women members, you should do your duty to your husband as a wife, shouldn't you? Also, you should do the duty of daughter-in-law and also the duty of mother. Only when you do all these duties well, are you faithful in all God's house? Let me give you an example. Let's say on a holiday, you have a meeting in your mission group or evangelism campaign. There's a meeting or preaching or whatever it is decided by the mission group. But in that morning, what if your husband says, let's go on an outing? Then what should you do? If you say, you already know I have an appointment in my mission group. Please understand me today. Then are you doing well to your husband? Your husband will feel bad. If your husband has good faith, he may understand, but most probably, he will feel bad. He wants to be with his family members on a holiday, but the wife wouldn't allow it, so he will feel bad. In that case, the wife is not being wise enough and not faithful in all God's house. Then what should you do? You should first get the permission from your husband. For example, you can ask, tomorrow is a holiday and do you want to do something? Is it okay with you if I go to the meeting of my mission group? But if you have something in mind, let me know. You should give the right of choice to your husband for that kind of day. Then you can decide things without causing any discomfort. The husband can say, you can just do your work for God, or let's go out to have dinner together, or let's go on an outing with the children. Then you should obey your husband. This is how to be faithful in all God's house. You don't listen to your husband all the time, giving excuses like you are doing church work, and you, sh you shouldn't say, my husband doesn't have enough faith. How can we say it is to be faithful in all God's house? Is it okay just to ignore your husband and children like that? You should consider everything and follow peace. There are priorities, and you should follow peace. Let me conclude the message. Viewing audiences, to be faithful in all God's house is to do your duty with the perfect heart of the Father God in all aspects. Therefore, only when you go into whole spirit and accomplish the heart of God the Father can you be faithful in all respects and be recognized to be faithful in all God's house. But even though you are not in whole spirit yet, if you try to be faithful in all God's house, you can go into spirit and whole spirit more quickly. Then in what ways do you have to try? Most basically, you first have to struggle against sins to the point of bloodshed 
to become sanctified. In the meantime, you have to try to be, you have to try to broaden your heart when you do your duties and try to perform each of the duties with all your heart, mind, effort, and strength. Some people do not work hard in the duties that they don't want to do very much or that seem to be trivial to them. Also, some others say, this is the limit of my ability and perform the duties only as much as they want within the limit of not having to try so much and sacrifice themselves. Church elders and men's mission members, do you know which duties will bring you more rewards and make you acknowledged more in heavenly kingdom? I told you when our volunteers group had devotional service. The services are, that are not usually seen by others are considered great in God's sight. If you volunteer to join such a group and work for God and the church diligently, whether somebody is seeing you or not, God will receive it with joy and give you great rewards in heaven. In the view of the master, you don't want to trust that person and you all want to give any work to that person next time either. I'm talking about those who only do as much as they don't have to do, uh, they don't have to sacrifice themselves. You can trust and entrust big things to the person when he is faithful in, all, uh, in small things. He may not be so competent in doing the work, but if he asks for help from others and tries to learn how to do it well, trying his best with his true heart, you will be able to trust him although the result might not be very satisfactory in the beginning. You can still entrust him with greater work thinking, although this, uh, his ability is now somewhat lacking, he has the proper attitude. Many doctors of WCDN, Walt Christian Doctors Network, praise our missionary Sharon Cho. It's not only one or two persons. She offers all her body, heart, mind, time, and everything for the kingdom of God and the church and the shepherd. That's why she can gain such praises. People around her also tell me that she is so dedicated and just seeing her touches their heart. The missionaries who are working with her say just seeing her moves their heart. They say it's difficult to follow her. They also say they are so thankful that they can do their ministry with such a missionary. Because she is so dedicated to God, God gave her church revival rapidly. God will also bring many sick people and those who are good in their heart to the church. God will give them grace so that they will be healed and they become good members of the church. God will also bless them in other areas. Although they don't have another medical conference next time, she'll be given another more important duty. It's the same with God. If you try your best with all your heart and sacrifice yourself in all the areas given to you, the Almighty God will give you the strength to do your duties. Also, to the extent that you are faithful in, in God's kingdom, He rejoices with you and gives you grace and power. You will realize the evil that you could not re realize before and receive the strength to throw away that evil so that you can go into spirit and whole spirit more quickly. I hope you will not work as you are dealing with a man, but with all your heart, wisdom, and mind, you will work as though you are serving God Himself. By doing so, as said in Psalm 101 verse 6, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a blameless way is the one who will minister to me. 
I pray in the name of the Lord that you will walk in a blameless way and be recognized as faithful men so that you will dwell with God forever. Before we end, let us read Psalm 101 verse 6 again. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of, of the land. God's eyes are looking for the faithful on this earth, who is really faithful and faithful in all his house, that they may dwell with me. Namely, God will give them the right to enter New Jerusalem. If you are to dwell with God, you have to be in New Jerusalem. So the faithful will gain the right to enter New Jerusalem. The Bible tells us how delighted God would be over faithfulness. It tells us about meekness, faithfulness, and goodness. Because Moses was faithful in all God's household, God spoke to him face to face and revealed himself to him, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a blameless way if you walk in a perfect and blameless way, it means you are in whole spirit. If we go into spirit, we will be in the third kingdom of heaven, so it means we dwell with God too, since we are in the same area. But those who walk in a blameless way, namely those who are faithful in all God's house, and walk in a perfect way, will minister to God. It tells us how closely we will stay with God. Who are the people who walked in a blameless way? Uh, for example, they were the ones like Enoch, Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Peter, Paul, Mary Magdalene, the Virgin Mary, David, and so on. These people will minister to God. They will receive the right to serve God at a very close distance. Those who can minister to God are not in the castles of the Lord or another's castle, but they have their own castles before the throne of God. They have very big personal castles. They are treated specially. Those who can minister to God are given personal castles in front of the throne of God. We can see they have such great privilege and receive God's special love. They acted like that while on this earth. They were perfect in their deeds and faithful in all God's household. To these people, God gives them special things. I hope many of you will go into these positions. There's no such rule that only Moses, Abraham, or the Apostle Paul can, can go into those positions. We can also get there only if you are qualified. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing part of God. Hallelujah! The Almighty God of love, lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint, 
and all nerves, tissues, and cells manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria, and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbar, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown, and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away, and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened, and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones, and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away. May the light come, Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration, and prayer. Add faith, hope, and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God. I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.